We've been preparing for 20 years to get to this day, to be able to harvest these trees and to unlock the value that's been growing out here. You know, it's part of our sustainability to make sure that the next 20 years and then the 20 years after that and then after that and so on and so forth, uh, we will continue to, to grow wood every rotation so that the next generations have, have wood to harvest and, and to use and continue to do this. In this particular case, we're going to West Fraser with a lot of these logs. At West Fraser Mill, they will saw those into lumber, dimensional lumber, and it's a very necessary product for us to have homes and uh, places to work and live and play. As a marketing forester, my role in all this is to take the stands of timber uh, in the forest that the land managers that I work with at Rainier have uh, grown and nurtured, as I said. It's my job to take this timber and to find the best buyer, the, the best meal, or the best individual wood procurement buyer that's willing to help us unlock the most value for the timber that's out there. The forest that you're seeing us harvest today well, was planted in 1998. It's planted in loblolly pine. Loblolly pine is known for its relatively fast growth and has a good straightness. That's what we're looking for, you know, and that's one reason we plant loblolly because it has uh, really good disease and resistance and other good characteristics that we're looking for that make high quality lumber. These trees were planted just like you would plant any other crop, uh, whether it's corn or wheat or whatever to grow and eat. And today we're harvesting that crop whereas you would harvest wheat or corn or anything within that calendar year, within after one growing season, it takes many growing seasons to produce the wood that we have here today. But now we're harvesting that, we're taking the logs to the mill. A feller buncher, as it comes up to a tree, that spinning saw blade, when it reaches full speed, the operator will push the tractor forward and it will sever those uh, stems within less than a second on an average size tree. The feller buncher, the two parts of that name, the feller, of course, felling the trees, cutting them down, and the buncher part is because it puts them in bunches in the head before he drops them, uh, keeps them in groups, and then that way the skidder can go and grab several stems at one time and because it would be a really inefficient way if he had to in, stop and pick up every single stem individually. The skidder is, a, is another large tractor what we would consider the back end of that particular tractor is a large grapple. Uh, it's a hydraulic grapple. And once he gets a grapple full of wood, he gets enough wood to make it worth going to the loader with, then he will turn around and head toward the loader and skid them. Basically, he pulls the butt ends off the ground and then the tips of the tree or the tops uh, will just drag along the ground. And that's why it's called skidding. And so he will drag them and place them beside the loader when the operator is ready. And then the loader operator will take them from there. The loader operator knows uh, what lengths, what the uh, specifications are at each mill. For some mills, 25 feet minimum length is, is what is needed to create a, uh, a, a usable solid wood product. He does this day in and day out, so he knows what 25 foot looks like. And so when he sees that it reaches at least that length, then he can then put it in the saw and, and saw it and then carry it to West Fraser. So here at West Fraser White House, what we do is we take trees and we turn it into dimensional number. We start receiving a loaded truck. We unload it with a big forklift and it goes to a machine that takes the bark out. From there, we go to the cutoff saws. We cut it in, into different lengths, depending on what the market's doing at that time. From there, we go to the canner line. So what it does is takes a round log and make it into a square in the canner. From there, it goes through the VDA, which it takes it to cut it down into dimensional lumber and it goes through the trimmer, sorter, and from there it goes through a big kiln. The kiln is like an oven. 
He pretty much cooks that lumber in there for a long period of time. And then in the planer mill, we make it soft and pretty so you can find it in a store near you. Our kills are 52 foot long. And usually it gets up to 230 degrees. And then it comes out dry on the other end. So the boards go through the planer 1,500 feet per minute. And that's fast, really fast. Planer takes it down to finished dimensions. It basically takes the rough exterior off and puts a smooth finish on it. After it's planed, it's packaged, and then it's moved to the finished lumber sheds to be shipped. The timber generally comes from a 100 mile radius of the uh, plant site here. Uh, we go as far as uh, north into Georgia and as south as uh, far as Daytona. We are not the landowner. We do not own any timberlands. Us Frazier does not. We work with uh, other landowners through dealers and other forest resource companies. We have a relationship with Rainier that uh, we, we, it's been long standing. Uh, since we've been here, uh, we, we buy a certain percentage of what we use here through Rainier. The primary use of the lumber that we manufacture here is used in trust uh, manufacturing processes that uh, are used to build new house constructions. In this process, there is no waste. In the green lumber that we produce, the sawdust that's used in the wood pellet business. Shavings is used in a variety of uh, applications as well too. And then bark is simply used for mulch. Within the next year, this stand will be raked to get all the debris up in the piles out of the way and it will be bedded with a large plow and then it will be planted and start a new stand all over again and that will all be done within the next year after i'm gone and and my counterparts are gone then the next the next group of rainier foresters will come along and uh, they'll take the land and and the trees that we've left them with just as you know we've received this land and these trees from others and uh, they'll continue to grow those trees and manage that forest, uh, not only for Rainier's interest, but for society's interest, of, you know, through carbon sequestration, oxygen production, uh, wildlife habitat. All this stuff that we do, you know, has, has other benefits, but, you know, as long as we, you know, keep managing forests, uh, we'll keep, keep doing this for, uh, for, for all of us.